This program is a joint production of the Kimokeo Foundation, whose mission is to preserve and perpetuate Hawaii's unique culture, language, people, and environment. Information is online at kimokeo.org. And Maui Causes, a crowd-funded media production group supporting not-for-profit, progressive, and environmental causes in Maui County. Join us on the web at mauicauses.org. Hello, kakiaka na ohana no Maui. It's really uh, give me great pleasure this morning to have uh, a couple guests, but uh, we appreciate you guys uh, listening to the Kimokeo Foundation show. And, uh, preserving, perpetuating, educating Hawaiian culture. And uh, this morning, uh, I'll let our guests introduce themselves because uh, it's an interesting time for all of us. And uh, so we want to share with you, but I'll let them um, introduce themselves and what uh, they represent uh, here on Maui. Uh, my name is Vernon Kalani Kao. Uh, I'm the po'o for the Ahamoku Kulamakai Council in South Maui. and. Um, I've been in a uh, resident in, in South Maui f since 65, and mahalo, Uncle, for having uh, us. Brilliant. Mahalo for being here. Yeah, I'm, mahalo. I'm really glad that we can be here and share because, yeah. uh, you know, your dad is one of my uh, mentors, uh, yeah, Moki Kalanikau, and uh, he's actually uh, the founder of the Va'a in the Hema area of Maui, you know, South Maui. And today, uh, mm -hmm. as you know, that we have so many Va'as in South Maui, you know, mm -hmm from uh, North Kihei, Naui, and all the way down to McKenna. So a tribute to your dad for uh, being in the Va'a uh, to us in uh, South Maui. And uh, you know, your dad's uh, vision was always to take care of uh, the Mo'opuna, yeah. you know? Correct. And yeah. today they're the most valuable one for us, you know, about uh, keeping our culture by teaching uh, the younger ones to help us carry on, you know, what they're doing. So again, mahalo to your, to your dad, your mom, who still lives <laughs> in Tipala, yeah. and uh, I'm really glad to uh, always daily associate well, with her. Well, that dad would always uh, yeah, re return the, the same words to you for uh, what, what you've been doing for, you know, not, not only that part of the island, but here and there, and, and mahalo for carrying part of his legacy along with you. Yeah, well, I think that's uh, really important, yeah, with uh, Ahomoku, you know, you representing Kula, mm -hmm. and might rightfully the ancestral family of South Maui, you know, the Kalani Kao, <coughs> you know. And we're, so um, it's really important that our uh, ohana, especially for those who have lived there for many, many years, that uh, understand that uh, the, the, the second generation is taking on their, what they call, people call it kuleana, yeah? Me, I, me, I want to tell them it's uh, the lifestyle of you being in a Makai because you were brought up on a Makai with your dad. So it's not just like, Oh, that's the kuleana, your responsibility. You live in it, you know? Yeah, and so yeah. now, you 1965, we're up to 2018. Prior to that was your dad. So um, the things you get to share here is real kauna, yeah? The deep secret hidden meaning of the families that mm -hmm. raised in the, in the moku. Yeah, mahalo. Mahalo. Aloha. My name is Foster Ampong. I'm from the Wailuku Moku. Mahalo Timoteo <coughs> for inviting us. Um, I grew up in Lahaina. My family's from Lahaina, but I currently live in Wailuku. So I'm one of the Wailuku Moko Council representatives. And so we basically um, help families, help the communities how to navigate some of the bureaucracies, you know, with their issues and, uh, and their concerns. But it's a, it, it's a community. Uh, uh, it's, it's a community organization in the sense that we help the community, the families, <coughs> in um, the resource management areas. And so, you know, I, I just want to say again, mahalo. Well, I think it's yeah. really important, uh, <coughs> you know, um, Foster that uh, when you say that you're from Lahaina but you live in Wailuku because uh, you know us Hawaiians yeah, we get family all over the island <laughs> yeah. so even though uh, you you're from Lahaina the Ohana is everywhere on the island and uh, so it's really great that you know from one moku to the other moku because we will we will um, we will do a series you know here we have the moku of Kula and the moku of Wailuku so I think. Uh, 
the ohana in Maui needs to understand uh, what exactly what you say. It's a community-based thing, and it's about our resources, you know. <coughs> um, and we, you know, the most main resource that we as Hawaiians is called Waiolo Kani, water of life, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And so you being in Wailuku, uh, you know, you're in a, you're in a place that uh, just recently uh, Waiolo Kani again sharing the resources, knowing about our resources, and there was a lot of uh, ohana, you know, that. Uh, you know, uh, Dewey, you know, of Ohana, he took the lead on, uh, you know, about the water resource. And I, I think the case was clearly stated of the water that really, uh, Maokamakai, you know? And, uh, and we're doing that with South Maui now. You know, South Maui was uh, kind of the last of the watershed because when they look at watershed, they look at East Maui and they look at West Maui, you know? Mauna Kahale Akala, Mauna Kahala Wai, you know? And uh, they never really considered South Maui as one of the places that we watershed was important. And we, we, uh, I think, um, Vernon, you can share with that because you're Makai, mm -hmm. and I think Mauka Kula is uh, Timmy um, Bailey. Tim Bailey, yeah, correct. Tim Bailey. So, <coughs> so Tim, if, if, if nobody knows Tim, Tim is uh, with Haleakala National Park, mm -hmm. and he's uh, doing the Hawaiian culture preservation, perpetuation, and education. And so. It's really rightful that he's up there too because his mom is Gordine Bailey, Auntie Gordine Bailey. Right, yeah. And they're essentially from the Kula area, you know. So it's uh, really important. So share with us about, uh, you know, our resources because the Ahamoko has been developed for help manage the resource or Correct. educate right. the resource. And it's a community based deal, you know, even though it's a Hawaiian way of life, we, we're looking at all the resources and we say, um, what do we have? or what is to be taken, or how do we preserve it, and how do we mitigate, or how do we don't mitigate and just keep it, you know? So I think that's a challenge, yeah? It's a real challenge uh, for the uh, Ahomoku. I mean, Kula Ahomoku is uh, from Mauka Makai, so mm -hmm. on the bottom of Makai, it, where, it goes, where does it begin on the North Kihei, and where does it end in the South? Oh, the, the, the boundary part. The boundary. Yeah, it, it's it's, you know, depending what map too, yeah. So we, we, we uh, when I say we, majority of, of whether you in the council or in the general public and, and some of the uh, uh, kumus, we, we base that on, I, I think the, the map is uh, 1870 in that era. Mm. And that's the map that most people uh, okay with, mm -hmm. uh, with the times we're in today. So the boundaries, from what what I've what I've saw, and and right now I still working on putting the, we we're gonna put the Ahumoku, I mean not the Ahumoku, sorry, the Moku and the Ahupua signs, on Piilani and Mokulele Highway. Oh, that's exciting. You know, so we're gonna do that, and that's gonna be sometime this year. So, as part of my kuleana of finding the the alignment of the boundaries, and that's challenging, already. So. So right now it's looking more towards uh, close to Spreckelsville and going up uh, pretty close to where um, Maui High School stay. I don't know exactly what that river is, but it goes all the way up to the top, to Haleakala. And then from Makai side, it just comes right across, almost following Mokulele Highway. Mm -hmm. And then it, it goes to where um, Maui, Maui Canoe Club by Sugar Beach. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then after that, get on point, approximate point over there that y you, you'll cross into Wailuku if you're leaving North, North, mm -hmm. North, North Kihei, we call it today, right? So, and then it goes down to where Kilohana uh, Road is um, right after Manakai. Wow, it's pretty big, yeah. And then go, of course, and then of course go all the way to the top of Haleakala. So it's a, it's a big moku. Um, you know, we all grew up calling it um, Kihei. Right. And our friends all calling them Kihe, but trying to just bring the the old Manao out and the educating part of, you know, what what Aupua you stay in in Kula Makai Moku. Um, so, um, you know, I recently became the Po'o mm -hmm. October of last year, replacing uh, Basil Shiro, who has been in that position for several years. Um, and and actually, it all worked out fine for for us. When I said yeah, um, and that gave Basil just to focus on fisheries and shoreline management. Mm -hmm. 
and then my kuleana is basically just trying to trying to get the committee set up w would be ev land uh, ocean shoreline stream and air mm -hmm. six committees and like any other moku out there is it, it is difficult having those committees set up but but we we getting there um, right now we just have ev land ocean and shoreline four of them. only four so we need the other two and it's going to happen um, since becoming the po'o um, for kulamakai moku um, I, I, I knew already that I, I wanted to work with also non-Hawaiian groups right? because I, I knew that for especially that side of Maui we need help right? Um, and as just Hawaiians in, in that side gonna, gonna be hard and it's still even challenging today just to get those old Moolelo stories um, and even the old families to come out in Kukua it, it is challenging and the most challenging part for us in, in that moku is, is the, the water issue, the, the flooding, what it has done to our reefs and, and now limo through the years, you know. And, and you know, uh, growing up in that, that part of Maui for some time, you know, we never, I, I never pay attention. A lot of us never pay attention. No. And now we're here, and now only reason I come out I want to be involved in the, the moment I said, yeah, I want to participate. Then you, you start remembering, you, you know, all the daddy thing and grandma and grandpa things start just happening so fast and you start getting, you know, the, the, the visions and the, the dreams of, of, you know, helping me in, in, in this process of kukua to, to this moku. And um, our most challenging part is always dealing with the water, the watershed issue. You know, how are we going to, um, you know, work with Mauka, with like, for example, Kauna Ulu Ranch. Mm -hmm. You know, so there, there is thought, there is uh, small effort. Um, it's going to take a lot of more than just the Moku Council. But we, we just need to be in the forefront and spearhead a lot of what goes on in, in the moku, and and I, uh, not in one way where, espe well, at least for 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 me in, in South Maui, uh, and when I say that is, um, I know I go and go and make the right decisions, the choices. I know if I don't know the manao, I go and find, I go and look, and I'm not picky if it's just um, you know this definitely not just one Hawaiian thing. Um, because I, I, I do tap resources through other uh, organizations and associations that that can kukua. Well, I think that's really the key uh, for the people to understand that uh, as Hawaiians, um, we, we, we right now, you know, um, including other people because we need their help. And uh, it was um, really interesting this morning that I ran into Teresa Kenolio at the fish pond. You know, okay, yeah. And so, you know, there was one of the resources that came to the fish pond for the last, I think, ten or fifteen years. She's like know. seventy something years old. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, she's yeah. been visiting the pond every time, you know. So this morning she showed up again, and she was, you know, she just come out and, you know, um, you know, come say her own prayers and blessing. And when you, so I think the the thing the public should understand, yeah, the public is everybody, mm -hmm. and this, um, understand what you said about the resource committee. You so to repeat back the resource we yeah. the EV. Yeah, so the e EV, uh, land, land, ocean, uh, seashore, air, stream. Yeah. yeah. So that oh, would be okay, for each of the mokus, yeah. right? The basis. Yeah. So when when these committees is is established, like for EVs, there would be like a poll. Yeah. For this committee, mm -hmm. and then they can branch out, you know get get more help for that poll right. and then that poll would have to report yeah. back to the poll for that moku yeah so so that that is the goal yeah i think i think everybody <coughs> should understand that you know that uh, the our moku is about the resources you know and what we had and how do we preserve what we had or um look at what's happening to you know the area of change yeah 
you know, yeah. roadways, houses, um, condominiums, and how does it affect um, what we're doing? Because I think it's important that, you know, when you talk Malcolm Mackay, you know, um, as you know, we have um, many um, streams, but the streams are not flowing to the ocean. They're blocked off. You know, from Kelia, there's one. There's another one by Kono Ulu. Uh, you keep, you, and uh, if you keep on going down, in the middle of what we call Kihei, you know, it's another important thing they should know that, you know, with Ahomoku, we're, you, we're trying to bring back the, the names that belong to the area. Yeah. Because the names that belong to the area yeah. is really important. They have the real history behind the names. Correct. Yeah. So you know, that's versus the what we're doing. So I think I think I wanted to let uh, people know about uh, the committees because it's important that they know that the committees are resources committee and, and what their jobs to do, you know? You mm -hmm. know, especially when you talk the shoreline, you talk the EV, um, you talk stream, um, all of that, you know, is re really important that <coughs> what is not happening, how we can make it happen or how we can do something to make sure the flow go right, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, to <coughs> expand a little bit more and for uh, context. Yeah. Um, the Ahamoku concept mm -hmm. is basically an ancient um, resource management right. uh, model that our ancestors yeah. had developed over hundreds and thousands of years. So <coughs> the late John Kaimikawa of Molokai was the one that brought this out. Yeah, John. And in 2006, um, <coughs> there was a gathering, a puvalu. Yeah. And from there you had, um, I'm going to use this term though, I don't like it, Native Hawaiian practitioners right. that gathered and met and, and they, they, they brought this ancient resource management technique, mm -hmm. these ancient Native Hawaiian tenants. Mm -hmm. And so it was how we, we as a people in the community from thousands of years ago understood and had this relationship with, with the environment in all aspects. And you can see that aspect reflected in the six committees that Vernon just, yeah. just mentioned. Okay, so for Maui, speaking only for Maui, there are 12 mokus, 12 districts for the island. Mm -hmm. And so these 12 districts today in this Ahamoku um, uh, councils, we fall under an umbrella called Ahomoku o Maui Inc. And so 12 mokus, they each have a council of representative from each mokus. So their kuleana is within these boundaries, these moku boundaries. And so Ahomoku o Maui Inc., their CEO is Kiamoku Kapu. Mm -hmm. And so this represents the, um, the, the grassroots, the community level. Yeah. And in 2006, they had the Puvalu. They came up with, you know, the rules. Um, legislation was passed shortly thereafter, and which was Act 212. Mm -hmm. And so in 2012, there was another act that took this one step further, Act 288. And this is where the Ahomoku Advisory Committee was, was uh, passed into law. And they fall under DLNR. Mm -hmm. So this committee is an advisory committee. To DLNR. To DLNR, to the chair. Mm -hmm. And so they have um, eight representatives or island poles. So the Moku Council is the island level. This is us. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm going to use one, one word for lack of a better description. We the Moku action. Yeah. <laughs> right here. Okay, the people. And so we, we deal with, with, with the... the the EV, the shoreline, the land, the air, um, what stream, the stream, oh, yeah. and and uh, um, ocean. ocean, ocean. Okay, and so these six committees, so to say, all have a pole, a chair, and so what happens is that's your basic ground level action taking place. So the concerns, um, uh, remedies, um, uh, process. I'm really big on you know the process that we take. This is where the whole community can get involved, <clears throat> and then so you know people come together, they brainstorm, they they meet, they discuss, they 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 do their fact finding, right. you know they they they, and, and from there 
we we aim and we really strive towards remedy, finding uh, solutions to some of the concerns and the problems. From there, it goes up the chain of command. Mm -hmm. Like I said, the Moku councils is the grassroots. For for Maui, we have 12 councils. Then it goes to the CEO of Ahomoku o Maui Inc., which is Kiamoku. Kiamoku and then Kiamoku. from there, we pass that on just in the form of me uh, as a messenger to the AMAC representative. The state will work. Which is within DLNR. DLNR. And that's Kyle Nakanulua for, for Maui. He's mm -hmm. the, the AMAC Po'o rep. Right. And so each island has their own rep. Mm -hmm. And then collectively, they form a committee called the AMAC committee. Mm -hmm. And again, there's just a committee to advise the chair. Right. And so you have this entire process laid out. But what I think, what I would want the community to really understand at this point is that this is fundamentally an ancient Hawaiian system yeah. that was established thousands of years ago, put into play, and I mean, we're the proof, yeah. Timotheo. Uh, Vernon, yeah. you, me, all the Hawaiians that survived today. Yeah. It's not a racial thing. Yeah. What I'm saying is that every Hawaiian you meet there on the street is a survivor yeah. of this whole history. So when we say, you know, maybe we shouldn't have built this development here because it's going to block the water coming down from Mauka. Mm -hmm. It's not an anti-development no, thing. No, no. It's because mm -hmm. our tutus <laughs> knew it from a thousand years ago. That's why they never built one house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and yet I think today some of the challenges is that there's misunderstandings in the community about what we do collectively as, as a moku. Yeah, well, that's important you know. for them to know that, you know, um, to understand that because that's not so, you know. Yeah, not right. at all. We're not I mean, anti, you know, we're, we're just no. trying to find, I think the key word is remedy. Right. We have what we have, but there's other things going to be to have that not need to be because we understand the educational part now. Right, and I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to say this openly because it, I feel it's super important and I don't want people to misunderstand mm -hmm. the work that we're doing. Mm -hmm. It is an ancient Native Hawaiian tenant. It's an ancient Native Hawaiian system. It's a cultural component that is Hawaiian. Yeah. And so it's not a racial or an ethnic mm. thing that some people may find us, th th you know, th there's a lot of folks what? out there that maka'u. Yeah. When yeah. Hawaiians walk in the room, a lot of folks get nervous. Yeah, yeah. You know, they think, oh my God, you know, here comes the Hawaiians, mm. they're gonna beef with each other. Yeah. Well, you know what, maybe sometimes we do beef with each yeah. other. For me, you guys know me, yeah. I, I, I don't want nobody exploiting yeah. Hawaiian culture. You know, I, I, I can sit with anybody. Yeah, I, think it's I, I can talk about any subject matter, but you know, as long as we, we talk yeah. to each other <laughs> equal, equal. Yeah, I think so. The kuka kuka is chokcho, mm -hmm. and I think the kuka kuka is deep understanding, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and, and I like about the Hawaiian ancient ways, you know, because, you know, um, all the nation in the world, the first nation, have a possessive part about that, you know? The Italians, the Portuguese, the Indians, but you know, it's, it's rightfully to be told and rightfully to learn and understand the ancient Hawaiian ways. Right. Because there was the best management then, and it should be a way of learning how to best manage ancient Hawaiian practice today. Especially, you, you know, in the Hawaiian Islands. Yeah, you you know, so yeah. when you look at it, it's <laughs> we're not in North America on the continent or South America or oh. Europe or Africa or Antarctica. We're here in the Hawaiian yeah, and, Islands. And we're 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 expressing to all who's in the community, you know, especially early part, you mm -hmm. know, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. So we're asking them to come and help because we need their help, yeah. you know. But we need them to come help with understanding that there are some. Uh, point of action that comes from our kupuna. So, you know, when you mentioned earlier part, you know, uh, Vernon, you know, oh, you know, doing this and, you know, when I, when I got involved and, you know, the, I think all of us have this personal experience that the more things we do, Hawaiian culture, yeah, you come natural, it comes it, back. Yeah. It, because I think our kupuna, you know, you know, some people think it's mythology, but I think they come and share in their own voice and their own what we call koko, koko, mm. ivi, or ivi, or mm. oi, our own bone, our own flesh, our own blood. Somehow, they, they kind of show us the way, you know? And, uh, <coughs> you know, it's like kialaka <coughs> iko mau kupuna, you know, the pathway of our ancestors. So I think they, 
they look at uh, you guys and all the people who's doing what you guys doing. You know, my kailua, you know, we're doing the work of us, you know, and and like you said, you know, they had something and it uh, and it blocked it, but you know, it is what it is. But there's other things happening that should not be. It is what it is. You know, the key word is remedy. You yeah. know, remedy uh, mm -hmm. you know, of uh, our resources because um, if we mock all of that, then we can pass on this. Um, deep secret meaning of our resources because our resources have a life cycle, yeah? You know, when, you, when we uh, talk mm -hmm. Malcolm Akai, so I think you guys should share that because people, you know, um, need to know Malka and need to know Makai, and in between, we had Kula, you know, <laughs> our farm area. So we never just go right down. And, right. and Kula was a really, I feel, <coughs> personally, Kula was like a most sacred place. That's why the water is so important because that's where we get our food from, you know. Of course, we get them on the mountain, but when you come to the Kalo land, you know, and our Kalo farmers, you know, they have a, you know, they face challenging times with the water, face challenging times with rules and regulation, but that was our food of life, you know. Yeah, the, um, you know, going back to Kula, Kula Makai, side of the Moku, it's, um, you know, the watershed issue, you know, what, what had transpired Mauka through the years and now we get rain Mauka and don't have to rain down South Maui and we get that terrible floods and mud and debris all come down and and um you know the 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 my manao is is the water you know, it, it it doesn't have, it's not even coming only on surface yeah it's coming underneath, and, and you know, yeah, uncle, if you go down by Maui Lu and all in the Kalama Street, if you go in the, the shallows and you rub your, your feet in the shallows. On one. Yeah, oh, cold out of water. On mm. one. So get plenty fresh water come from Mauka anyway. So it don't have to be just surface water. But uh, my Manau, and this experience goes, it began when I met you, Uncle Charlie, and Tilehu at that that stranded, I think it was pilot whale. Pilot or, whale. Yeah, and pilot we can go to the, the 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 inflatable pool. Yeah, yeah. To go, that was when things when really come come to me and what I needed to do, and when I can go honey, when I had the chance to go inside and honey, the that was the manau. Um, the water have to touch the ocean. It may look Lepo Kapulu, but but it's it, it's need need to happen because it, even our intentions are set. We we put in our intention of what we want to do Mauka, that that has an effect on on the process of of healing and yeah. and and reestablishing the the limo and the the reefs again, and that was given to that that pilot that that will. Yeah. And I, th I think the key, you know, like um, people need to understand, you know, I, I, as I hoi as kawa around the island with my wa'a, you know, the, the water got to flow because there's mm -hmm. some ho'ai lona, yeah, like yeah. the limo ele ele and the, 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 the green seaweed because the green seaweed is the ho'ai lona for fresh water. And within the fresh water, all, you know, uh, the one of the things uh, I learned with the VVL you know, he said, oh, the, the Ali blood runs in the ocean from Malcolm Akai. But really, the red fish mm. thrive on fresh water. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So wherever you get fresh water, especially when you go like uh, Molokai Sai, Onu, you know, uh, some of that disappearing, but uh, where the fresh water, f you know, fluently go in the ocean, we get Viveo, we get Ehu, mm -hmm. we get Manpachi, we get Kumu. <coughs> yeah, so yeah. people don't understand that. Uh, one life to the other life, mm -hmm. you know, and then we talk about the Ailolo and uh, uh, the, uh, the, you know, the V, you know, the freshwater OP. Mm -hmm. So, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm, I'm from Kauai, so I know we can pick up the big ones, yeah, but we, if you see the big ones on a full moon, then it's okay if you get them, but if you get like only dime or nickel, mm -hmm. it's not good, you know, mm -hmm. because you, you're, not gonna, you're not gonna get to growth. So I think people need to understand like what you just said, the freshwater no only flow on the top, the fresh water flow on the bottom, yeah. you know, but we need the floor. We need the floor. We, we need the floor, so yeah. if we don't have the floor, 
I mean, Molokai is a special place. You guys know that, yeah? So, you know, they took me out to Molokai where almost a quarter mile yeah. out on a low tide, minus low tide, there was holes in the reef, you know? When you go over there, you go there in the reef, on a minus low tide, you can go like that, the fresh water right there. Right, right, right. You know, so, you know, they, those are the other things, yeah. that, uh, Vernon, because as we do stuff, we get to learn more about it. Yeah. And yeah. I think our ohana, our community, should learn that there's their resources and the, how they need to, we all need to work together. So I think it's important that what you brought out, you know, when you call action committee, yeah? That's where we see Vernon, and we see all the guys on the shoreline, you know, talking to the community. Right. He recently shared with uh, Villa of Canelio, you know, about, you know, what he do and everything. And, and they, uh, they, were, they were, as they learned more about him, they said, wow, this is a good thing, you know what I mean? Yeah. And about managing the water going down. Oh, so, yeah, when we came, right? You know, yeah. and so, it's, I think, you know, that's there's there's, there's what's happening. So when you say this is an action committee, I think that plays a big role with the action committee because you direct in contact with the people today and your people tomorrow, and more so you're important about um, sharing with them, you know. And, 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 and they should understand that it's not an anti thing. They should understand yeah. that it's more, it's, <coughs> it's, a, it's a beneficial thing because if we create more liabilities, we have less assets. It's a whole lokahi. Yeah, whole lokahi. Okay, and you brought up something really good too, Timoteo. When you were explaining your experiences on Molokai, as well as on Kauai growing up, knowing that in the full moon, when you see the dollar size, yeah. it's okay. When you see the, the, the nico or the dime size, oh, aole, aole. Kapu. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so our kapu. See, had, had but, but what's important about that is, that is part of the ahumoku yeah. system. That generational knowledge that was passed down for hundreds and hundreds of years. The low tide, yeah. when the papa come up in Molokai, and then you can see the, yeah. the, 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 I was taught that that is Kapunawai, yeah. the name Kapunawai. Yeah. And that's the fresh water coming out in the ocean in that mm -hmm. Punawai. Yeah, so not. all of this is, is yeah. and, and what I'm getting to, the point I'm getting to is that when we have malahini, yeah. when we have um, uh, people that come that are not from our kapaina, and they come to, and, and we interact, we interface, and we work together, whether it's on the shoreline, in the streams, up on the mauna, this is where that understanding comes into play. Well, I think it's the, the ahamoku, yeah. the mok action people on the, you know, yeah, I think it's and then, you know, all the malahinis are coming to help. This is where we can, if people can understand that this is how we were educated, this is how we were taught. And I think that's an enrichment they want to learn, but we're going right. to take a, a few minutes break and come right back. This program is a joint production of the Kimo Keo Foundation, whose mission is to preserve and perpetuate Hawaii's unique culture, language, people, and environment. Information is online at kimokeo.org. And Maui Causes, a crowd-funded media production group supporting not-for-profit, progressive, and environmental causes in Maui County. Join us on the web at mauicauses.org. Hello, Maui. Welcome back. We just had a little break, <laughs> but we left the thought called enrichment. And let's continue that because that's really important, yeah, um, about... Um, the Malahinis, you know, and making understand that we are working Ohana, you know, and how, how we can work together and understand together because uh, it's uh, not so easy for them to accept Hawaiian ancient ways, but many of them would like to be involved, so, and right. we, you know, and, and we, we find many of them helping us today and working with us, but. It is a cultural, Hawaii, our resources, mm -hmm. whether you, you, you you work for the federal government in the park service or the state you know parks area whatever we do however we interact and we we communicate with one another on all the levels you know from the from the um, committee or the council level mm -hmm. to the moku level to the state to the county mm -hmm. to the feds to all the bureaucracy when we're communicating when we're, we're interacting the culture is hawaiian and so we should not marginalize it. Native Hawaiian, OEV, Kanaka Male, whatever you want to call it. Hawaiians were here for thousands of years, at least a couple thousand years. 
we were here. Yeah. And we are still here. That's the point. Yeah, well, I think we, that we people need to understand here. that. Um, yeah. It's a living culture. Yeah. yeah. It's not a host culture. Right, right. You know, when it's you're a talking, living a living culture is, uh, <coughs> you know, we live here, we're born here, we're raised here, but we also live in with the belief of what you're talking about with the natural resources. Because the natural resources are sacred, and they yeah. all have a deep secret meaning of why we're looking at those committees. You know, it's important that uh, we're talking Eevee. When we're talking Eevee, we're talking archaeological. And if you look at archaeological, um, they've been doing archaeological work for a long time, but the laws didn't prevail until recently. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. So the laws are not mm -hmm. 50 years old. They're not 75 years old or 100 years old. I look back in uh, the water system because um, some of the water system go back 1902, you know, and 2002, you know. So as a as a, as we look at these committees, you know, this is thousands of years, you know. And you know, the recent film I've been really enjoying watching is uh, Nino Thompson about the voyage of Kohalavi, mm. you know, and he talks about 200,000 years, and he talk about 2,000 years of voyaging, you know? And just now, because uh, Hoklea in the early 70s started and it's only like 42 years old, as far as now, you know, well, being aware, but when we talk about a kupuna, he's talking thousands of years. Eons, you know? yeah. And so just imagine Kealakahiki, mm. right? Mm. So I don't know if everybody, uh, I think everybody um, understand Kealakahiki, you know, but when you explain you know, it's the pathway to Tahiti. Right. Right. You know, it's a uh, it's a long way. It's not like uh, taking a hike up Wahe Valley. You know, when people are talking about hiking on our islands, you know, this is a long, long way for our kupuna. You know, mm -hmm. and how significant um, Hokulea made that time because it's almost like he said, uh, it's just like a, a lunar landing, like landing on a moon. You know, we go and go back in times. You know what I mean? Uh, but now look at the recent um, arrival back home. They left 2014 and come back 2016, 2017. 2017. So, um, and now everybody look uh, towards the Hokulea for a lot of resources because they've made some mileage. But more than that, they've traveled exactly what you just said. So I, I think the community should know that you know Hawaiian is not a host. Hawaiian is a living culture. Right. You know. So I think that's really important, you know what I mean, kind of thing. Mahalo, that's a good one. You know, I think that, um, culture, yeah. and we live it daily, so we, we, we feel in our puvai. Anything, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's a, it's a other thing, you know. I think that, you know, if you see away, you know, somebody away the EV, away the stream, away the shoreline, away the air, away the ocean, it's kind of like away to your own self. Right. Because we were connected. You know, I mean, easy to, to um, be talking about the Waiolo Okani, you know, water of life, you know. And then you're talking about, the, you know, the ocean, you know, when you see the, the, the mammal and his struggle, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, you know, that was your biggest Hawailona. Yeah. You yeah. know, so, you know, in, uh, you know, when Vernon just came and then uh, we had a, yeah. We have a club right now by uh, the fish pond Kanapuna or Kekai, you know. So that's our kupuna. And I, we named them that so that the guys know that our kupuna is Kekai, our kupuna is Nakalani, our kupuna is Konua, you know. And uh, we, you know, people talk about science, yeah, guys. You know, our kupuna was not science. They, 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 they knew everything. So if science is like a study of a theory, yeah, Aukupuna is not a study. You know what I mean? Aukupuna is a <coughs> living science. And it's so difficult, yeah, because like you, me, mm -hmm. and uh, Foster trying to get Aukupunas, you know, mm -hmm. you know, to um, share with us. And it's really difficult. Aukupuna at 92 years old or close to 100, you know, they're already makaala, you know. They, they, they're, not, they're not excited because of that, because of the age and everything, but and we respect that, so we don't go there and pressure them out. So, mm -hmm. so just like a, a living kupuna, mm -hmm. we wouldn't pressure them out. So, mm -hmm. so look at our, our kupuna on the land. Our land is kupuna. 
you know. So it's almost the same thing. Yeah. Pressing out kupuna. You know what I mean? Yep. yep. You know, so I think people is should know that, you know, that the community we get for Ahomoko reach out, you know, and reach out, you know, kuka kuka for what you say, a remedy, you know. Yeah. And so we're not looking for a battle, you know, we're looking for a remedy. And so like you said there, I think when people see the Ahomoku people, oh, wow, what are they gonna do now, right? <laughs> but you know, I think that reflects on the truth, the porno. Yeah. Not too many people wanna know the porno action. You know what I mean? Yeah. So and, and no, no, and, and um, that's probably a whole other day subject, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we yeah, can get into, but you, you yeah, get right on the nail. But, but that's, yeah. I think, the reason that I'm excited about uh, the Ahomoko series, you know what I mean? Here we get the Kula and Wailuku, you mm -hmm. know, so uh, the next uh, individuals, uh, we, we welcome them, you know, the community, the culture resource community or the culture action community, because people need to understand. I mean, even like um, when you're talking, when I was really excited when you talk about the signs, you know, the Ahopua signs, you know? Yeah, yeah. Or the Moku signs, because uh, we started to see some up in the east already, yeah? Oh, right, yeah, you know, yeah. And then uh, Oahu all over. Yeah. And I, uh, and I think Kauai's talking. I'm the, uh, they, they get. They get, yeah. They get, they get. They get Kauai, you know. So as I travel with the VA, you know, it's really important because we want to know what moko we in. Right. Because yeah. um, for us, we don't want to go in the moko and just jump on the moko. We want to make sure that we call and communicate and ask for permission. Right. You know what I mean? Okay. And if we ask for permission, they are granted they will stay. But if not, then we should move on. Right. And uh, and so when we travel on on Kauai, you know, mm -hmm. especially the Pali coast, you know, because uh, there was so much stress put on our kupuna over there. So there's a lot of places you cannot land and cannot camp, you know, because uh, they 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 abused it. Right, right. And, and I'm not saying yeah. any particular. I mean, all all of us responsible for that abuse, you know, because somebody abused them. Uh, we used to take the kuleana and teach them. So that's what's happening now right. mm -hmm. with the whole North Shore of um, Napali Coast. We say, I, I give, uh, you know, great cheers to them, trying to manage the, mm -hmm. all the, all the uh, committees, you know, especially the Moana. So I think they're doing, a, you know, I think all the Ahomoku people in the state of Hawaii is getting to where um, the position that now you can kuka kuka. You know. Yeah, and that's a good point. You know, growing up in Lahaina, I was maybe a year and a half, two years old. <clears throat> My mother would take all us, maybe four or five of us kids down, holo holo. You know, right there in, on, on, uh, uh, in Wahikuli. And so you get mala, you get Wahikuli. So one of the first things that we thought when we go holo holo is that, and one of the first things I can remember is piki no pihi, piki limu. So picking up he certain gotta be certain size. Yeah. If if not, then you no know, touch, you know. And don't go down that side because that family they live in that ahupua that's their icebox. Yeah. That's their place. Unless, you know, you welcome then they say, Okay, but no mahoe. Mm -hmm. So maho and kuliana was one of the first words I learned. And, and it referred to respecting each other's boundaries. And so my mom always said, you know, and she said this in, 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 in she paraphrased it in different forms, but basically this is what she said. How you take care of Yukuliana first is you don't maha oi somebody yeah. else's. You know. So when you when you share your stories and Vernish stories, you know, that's always coming out. And I guess in the Ahomoko, that's one of the things that, you know, knowing the boundaries helps us to respect each other's kuleana. You know, and, and then we can, and that lends towards the remedy or the sustainability of um, protecting and managing our resources so we have enough for the next day or the next week or the next generation. Yeah, yeah I want to uh, reach out and uh, shout out to uh, Lanai, Kepa Mali, you know. Mm. Oh, you know we, yeah. uh, we voyaged there and, uh, you know, reached out to him that uh, we don't want to just compare our canoe. We want to make sure that we're doing the right thing, you know? And so he was um, there to accept us and receive us. And I taught all the Maui Kanu people. I didn't taught, I asked or recommend that, you know, our way of um, 
canoe is when we get down, you know, <coughs> give them kalo, give them bread food. Mm -hmm. uh, so the the community or uh, the the Va'a community was so so aesthetic about learning all about that, you know. And I think that will be the key to the Ahomoko because not the key but one of them would be, you know, they can be taught and they can they can get involved. They need to get involved and if they get involved they'll learn. You know, that they learn about exactly what you're talking about your mom, you know, telling you, you know, this size, this size, you know, and really was a way of, of bringing up. And, and in that natural way of bringing up, we now look back, we now look back, oh, our mom wanted to save the Opihi population. Right. I wanted to save the different varieties of Limo LL, Limo Pepe, Limo Kala, and all of those guys right. had a significant for the names, you know, you know, and uh, Manuel, you know. And, uh, you know, so now we have places, you know, that people care for, you know, but not, I mean, it's a big because we, were, we had little and we get something, but it was bigger before, <laughs> a lot much yeah. bigger. Yeah. And if we keep on communicating and, and coming up to remedies and having mm -hmm. the community know that the Aomoko is an action committee for yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Yeah. And I think that's what people need to understand that. Um, that's why uh, Hawaii is a living culture, you know, and Hawaiians are living culture, you know, not, uh, and we don't have a, a whole lot, so we need to cherish that, and, and I think that you guys are working with this level you guys have is going to get us somewhere with uh, the ohana, I say the family, because everybody should be involved as a family, and we would care for them like we do our own, you know. Yeah. And we do that with all the resources, and I think they'd be great, you know. You know, so I think that's really great that we can share that with everybody, you know. Renin? Yeah. Um, you guys, um, you guys have maps. You know, you have maps. Maybe next time we can have some maps so people can see. We can put it on a on oh. a, on a. You can bring it to them and they can show the map. You know. Yeah. Kind yeah. Of thing. <coughs> yeah. We can. Yeah. We can do you that. Know. Yeah. It will give them a yeah. general idea and until until you guys start measuring exactly where the thing is. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, um, been working with some archaeologists. Um, Tanya is one, and Bob. Bob, I think. Habdi. Well, Habdi. Or, or Rob Habdi. Yeah. So, so Tanya. Tanya is uh, on uh, the archaeological ground. Yeah, she get her own. <laughs> I think Aina archaeologists I think but and and we kind of get w the idea where where these signage going to go the 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 challenging part is some like the the markings huh the markings on the words and yeah. some some the like so we have to research more of the the molelo to that ahopua and not be so related to the ranchers for example right so it, it's it's challenging, and and we're getting there, but it's going to happen. Uh, markings or no markings, it's going to happen, and and we can make adjustments later. But but it's it's a it's going to be like a pilot project for for Maui um, because we we was fortunate to have someone like Kelly King to uh, introduce. He get this funding yeah. for environment and culture. Yeah. So she asked myself and. Um, uh, a board member uh, from KCA to go do the the homework. So right right now we're getting ready to go um, meet with uh, Department of Transportation here, but they they already giving me the signals that they like us copy Oahu, mm -hmm. but we don't like Oahu sign. We like make <coughs> how we feel for Maui Nui. No, I think that's a really important. Yeah, what yeah, you just said. Because we don't want to you know, where where we we led to be like a copy system, yeah? That's not a copy system because our living culture, each moku, exactly. each ahopua had its own identification yep. Yep. and had its own way. And that's why it made it made it so unique mm -hmm. that we don't copy like, each other. That's, that's you know, right. And you know, we identify each other uh, by the way we look, by the way we have our, our, our flowers, our lays. How it identifies strictly where we're from. You know, yeah, no, so, no, and, and so yeah. people should understand that. that the, the DOT <laughs> using Oahu as the template, and and we getting ready, you know, to go 
and me, well, no, Aole, Kauai did theirs the way they wanted to. Mm -hmm. So why their DOT was okay and, and the support over there different from Maui, yeah. Yeah. Um, but no, 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 and and this is good because yeah. it, it, the names, you know, the, the 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 place names are so important. So my mother was born in Kika. So when I was little, Ma, where you was born? Oh, I was born in Kika. Where is that? Oh, it's Kanapali. Oh, you born Kanapali? No, Kika. Born in Kika. <laughs> so, not realizing at that young age that names were changed. Yeah. For you know, some were for convenience sakes, and some were for uh, uh, commercial reasons. Now, when you look at the sheriff in Maui, okay, and folks say, "Oh, Black Rock," right, right? It's not Black Rock; it's Pu'u Keka. Pu'u Keka. Pu'u is the hill. Yeah. Keka is the vahi. Okay, Pu'u Keka, vahi kapu, lena, yeah. So today, you see names Black Rock. So for me, it's important that when I'm addressing any issues or concerns of that area, I say Pu'ukeka, not Black Rock. I, I, I will say, you know, correction, Pu'ukeka. Yeah, well, that's, that's and that's not to, to be controversial oh or no. confrontational. Oh no. yeah. it, it, is, it is so folks understand that Black Rock is not the original name place it, yeah, it has a name for a very specific reason yeah, but i think it's important yeah preservation mm -hmm. perpetuation education yeah Pu'u ke ka'a, yeah. you know versus black rock right when and living talk, culture living culture when living you talk culture. when you talk black rock boom the name dead right but when you talk Pu'u ke ka'a, it's a living name because it describes reason why it's so and then when you go back about the the, the major and the markers you know so it's the other thing people should say that um the, the Ahomoko community is researching mm -hmm. and reaching out to Kupuna and finding out what really is, you know? Yeah. And like you said, you know, even though we don't get it on the spot, yeah. I think the more we work with it, the more we're going to learn. Right. And, and the more, yeah. so at one point, you know, you might choose this and then you're going to learn. So even, you know, uh, we're never going to stop learning because our Kupuna have so much secret you know, you know, when we talk about kupuna, some say, oh, you know, they don't say that. So like your mom said, no, I was kekaa. Yeah. Right? So we would refer to them, oh, our kupuna, they popa keki, eh? But they're standing, they're standing cool. Yeah. They're standing cool. I was halal in kekaa. Yeah. And, and that's the thing, you know, that's, that's my mother's story. She was literally born in kekaa. Yeah. So on social media, I get pounded a lot. Yeah. by standing up and voicing my, my opinions and my positions. And one of them was the, the Pu Black Rock, yeah. the mm -hmm. Kika. Yeah. And so for me, it's not about challenging the, the status quo, challenging the system. You know, it's, it's Kika. Yeah, so I think people understand that. Our communities yeah. understand that. Yeah. Our challenge is, is, uh, is not a battle. Our challenge is it's a living culture, and we want to make things right. You know what I mean? And, uh, and and you, you're standing up for it, you know. And so, you know, you're standing up because that's what's right. And if you bring back the rightful name for the rightful place, mm -hmm. there'll be a lot of other things that will come with yep. it. Yeah, and that's why what Vernon doing, yeah. I so appreciate all, and applaud him because, yeah, the energy you know, will, yeah, things And Kiyomoko doing it in Lahaina, yeah. you know, with the Kimoko, names. Kiyomoko is, yeah. is unreal, he's doing a great job. Yeah. You know, Kiyomoko has a library of, of yeah. books, so people should understand that you know, uh, Aikani or mm -hmm. Maui mm -hmm. has a library of, of documents and research. They're not, yeah. you know, flying off the handle. And right. so right. they too, you know, uh, standing like your mom, you know, this is this, this is this, because they worked really hard to do yeah. that. So not Aikani and Kiamoko, that's a living culture. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. People should understand that, you know, yeah. we're not, uh, we're not trying to, uh, we, we're just trying to we're not work crazy. together, yeah. kuka yeah. kuka, and do what's right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a good example, is like, uh, your mom, Kekaa and Pu'u Kekaa, because it can be like 100 feet away. Right. And, and the kupuna can tell you, you know. Well, just <laughs> just so, you know, just, just to, to clarify, what's known today as a Kanapali resort area mm -hmm. is actually Kekaa. Right. And then, of course, you have Hanaka'o, and then it goes out to Honokawai, you know. 
but that it's <clears throat> that area is Kekaa. So yeah. I guess when they developed the hotels back in the 60s, they went with Kanapali Resort, yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to think of the tutu out in uh, Kahana. She was a scholar in a... Oh, in, in the Emma shop. In the Emma shop. Yeah. So in the Emma's sister was a, was one, one of the sisters I, I really admired because she was uh, preserving their whole uh, names on the coastline, you know? Yeah. yeah and yeah. Uh, she went all the way to Washington to, to uh, make this claim, you know? Who was that? Um, the, all the Honu Bays, you know, Honu Kahau, yeah. Honu Kaloa, you know. I don't know what was written up, but something was written up. But, you know, I reflect on what you said, you know what I mean? You know, this has been an exciting time for us, um, for me, especially sharing with you guys on this Kimokia Foundation show. So, you know, I really want to thank you guys for coming. Mm -hmm. Hello, you know, Uncle Vernon, oh, yeah. for you from the, the Kula Moko, yep. you know, I know that you, you say you're the poor for Makai and Timmy the poor for Malka, but, you know, I think the public should know that uh, you know, when I look at the, the, the mokos, yeah, I look at the kupuna action to the mo'opuna. Yeah. What we do on the top is what <coughs> we got to be careful. So, you know, when you talk about the ocean, you know, it's really uh, a, a, a cool vow plan and a kupuna mm -hmm. plan, you mm -hmm. know. And so I think that uh, people need, uh, I think we had a really great discussion, and I, oh, I look forward to having more discussion with both of you guys. Uh, you know, an hour back. time, we, can, we probably can cook out, cook out for a long time, but <laughs> I think it's time that, the Ahumoko, um, you know, um, more people understand what's going on, you know. And I think it's really great for you guys to be here on the uh, Kimokia Foundation uh, show. And I want this time to thank uh, Akaku and uh, yep. their team for allowing us to share with uh, Ohana or Maui no Yokama, yeah? The, the Ohana. So mahalo. Thank you very much. This program is a joint production of the Kimo Keo Foundation, whose mission is to preserve and perpetuate Hawaii's unique culture, language, people, and environment. Information is online at kimokeo.org. And Maui Causes, a crowdfunded media production group supporting not-for-profit, progressive, and environmental causes in Maui County. Join us on the web at mauicauses.org.